Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Surface Sessions. It's been a year. It's been a whole year since I embarked on this crazy little journey of discovery. Welcome to Surface Sessions, a brand new series of videos that talks about making music on the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. The i5, the eight gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD drive is the one that I want. So here we are, we're going for it and the journey begins. Oh, look how young he is, so fresh and full of wonder. I bought the Surface Pro 3 for a couple of reasons. First of all, I needed a portable platform for live performance. And secondly, well, just look at it. It's, it's the coolest laptop on the planet. But it was more than that. The Surface Pro 3 offered something more than your standard laptop or tablet. It was powerful, like a decent laptop, but it's also sort of thin and light, like a tablet. The seriousness of a laptop, but with all the accessibility and fun of a tablet. I wanted to see what touch could bring to the creative table, what potential there was in the digital pen, and whether any of it was interesting enough to talk about. Well, I'm still here, and I'm still talking about it, so I, I kind of guess it must have been. Although I don't talk about it as often as I like because, geez, how long it takes to put these things together. Well, pretty much everything works. I've packed it full of audio software, Cubase, Pro Tools, Reason, Stage Light, FL Studio, Studio One, Sonar, you name it, I've jammed it onto this thing and it's all pretty much worked. I'm even about to go head to head with notation software, staff pad and Sibelius. So look out for that coming soon. But I've stuck everything on here and it's lapped it up, tableted it up. <laughs> Cubase, Pro Tools and Reason have worked perfectly with single touch and with the pen, even though they don't officially support it in any way. Ableton Live required a little bit of messing about in order to get their sort of absolute mouse mode on to make the knobs and sliders move correctly. But then with its built-in scaling, it then becomes an awesome piece of software on the surface. Touch compatible software like FL Studio and Stage Light are completely wonderful on the Surface Pro 3 and are totally the best choices for the full-on touch environment music making experience. The other two so-called touch compatible bits of software, Sonar and Studio One, were both great and terrible both at the same time. Sonar frustrates the hell out of me in that they were the first out of the gate with multi-touch, but they completely forgot to include any in the arrange and editing. So the console's great, but that's kind of all you get. Studio One went a bit further than that in that they provided all these wonderful tools for editing and moving things about in the range page, but they made it so slow as to make it kinda unusable. Great still in the console and in the VC instruments and bits and pieces, but just in the arrange page. They also did something really screwy to the pen, but hopefully they'll sort that out in time. There's loads more to try out as well. I mean, you sign Hollyhock has been on my radar all year. I'm always talking about it, saying coming up soon, my review of you sign Hollyhock. I just have not had the time to sit down and get into it because it's not an immediately intuitive program, but it looks like it would blow my mind. I've just got to find the time to get in there. So there's lots more that I haven't talked about and we could be doing on the surface. And it's on my list of things to do right after I've got over all this notation business. In using the digital pen, I've sort of learnt and flogged to death this idea that you need a toolbar. Trying to use the pen in music software is a bit like watching your dad try to find something on the internet. You know what he's after and it's all right there. It just seems to take an age to do anything. So using the pen to flip through menus, to tap and hold, to do the right click and, and those sorts of things just make it tiresome. Whereas a simple toolbar, a command bar down the side with copy and paste and undo, ooh, show mixer, open effects GUI, those kinds of shortcuts would revolutionize the use of the pen and make it so much easier to use in music software. But you know this, I'm banging on about this all the time. And I had hoped that my harping on about it would have inspired a little crack team at Microsoft to, uh, to get the finger out and do something about it. But then Windows 10, came along and sadly there was not even a sniff of anything to do with the digital pen. I mean, what are they doing over there? 
start menu. I don't need a bleeding start menu. I need a toolbar for my pen. But in the meantime, toolbar creator still seems to be absolutely the best choice for sorting that out. The biggest disappointment of the year was probably Smiths and Martins Emulator Pro. I mean, I love these guys, but the glacial speed with which things develop and come along and all the sort of unfulfilled promises of templates and stuff, it just boggles me. And so I just end up sort of ignoring it. There was an update to version 1.54 when I first got the Surface and I used that to create my first sort of pen toolbar uh, for Cubase, which was awesome. It's a great tool for that before I discovered the toolbar creator. But Emulator is still a blank page. It's still, there's still nothing there. The only templates that exist are for Tractor. And yet in every promotional video you see, every time they're on the telly going, woohoo, look at this, look at this, touchy, touchy. They say, you can have these templates. These are available, come and get them. And yet nothing ever appears on the website. So if you want to control anything, you have to start from scratch. I mean, that's not terrible, but it's like buying a hardware controller and then having to solder it together and arrange the things and how you want them to be. Why can there not just be a simple template for Mackie control, a simple template for Ableton of launching clips and bits and pieces like that. I don't understand why these things are so difficult for them to produce. But now, of course, they're all about the Mac. They've released a version two, which is on the Mac, on OS X. They've released a brand new piece of hardware, which, I mean, in the face of things like Lima running on the iPad for a few dollars, I don't really see where the market is. I guess they're looking at the Slate Raven market maybe but there's nothing new on the pc and the surface is such a fantastic platform for emulator if only they could make it easier for people to get into provide some templates please and and sort us out and then you you know everyone's going to be dancing on it but at the moment no it's still just a dj thing and they're doing their dj thing and that's fine moving on in terms of system performance, I've learned that the Surface Pro 3 really likes audio. It likes samples, it likes loops. It gets a real kick out of playing all of my Ableton Live projects without any complaint. It's way powerful enough to run some decent sized projects. And I have it running Ableton Live alongside our Chaos Grand VJ, which is projecting images and video out to a couple of screens, all running on my Surface all at once and reliably, trustworthily in a live, panic infused situation. What it doesn't like quite so much is is polyphony. If you load up a huge synth and bang away at a load of keys, it then starts hitting crackling points, which is probably more to do with its real-time performance and how well it adapts to USB interfaces and things like that, as opposed to really hitting CPU ceilings. Because of the nature of its CPU, its uh, power requirements, its thermal profile, it doesn't like keeping both cores running simultaneously. It doesn't like sticking at a very high gigahertz level. It's always trying to shut itself down to save power and to save on battery and to stop the thing from catching fire. And that's not ideal for a CPU intensive music making session. But you can still push it just as long as you give it some space to catch up. But for glitch free playback, you need to stay away from the, from the bleeding edge. Otherwise it will go clock down and In live performance, it's truly excelled and lived up to every single expectation I have in a live performance environment. I've used it at about half a dozen gigs and it's so freeing when compared to a laptop. You know, you've got this gorgeous big screen sitting there front and center looking at you. The first thing you do is get rid of the keyboard because you don't want that. And you can get your fingers right on it and right in there. It's just a completely different experience from trying to faff around with a trackpad or try to find a mouse in the middle of a gig. You can just reach out and touch mm -hmm. what you need to do. Oh, it's awesome. So we are Soul Circus Masked and everything is working. Everything's working. Grand VJ is doing its thing. Ableton's doing its thing. Um, using a mixer to run things through to give me that little bit more control over individual sources, but uh, it's all really come together really easily in a different space to last time, which is going to look more and more interesting as the evening goes on, I think. I guess it's a similar experience to performing live with an iPad, but with my Surface, I can just do 
so much more. I'm not having to use a little controller app to control another computer. I'm not having to use kind of a, a single synth or a, trying to get audio bus to work without exploding. I'm using real software, the same software I use on my desktop, I'm using in live performance, but with a tablet and having all the advantages of that, of that sort of interface, all the advantages that an iPad brings, but with the power to use proper software. So, you know, there's no compromises. I love that. I love that I'm using a proper computer and I'm accessing it in this way. And it's just breaking down all the barriers that, are, that occur at a gig when using a computer. And that's, that's phenomenal. That all by itself is a reason for getting one of these little fellas. Yeah, laptops at some point have always let me down, but this hasn't even broken a sweat. I mean, I've had projectors blow up, fuses go, I've had screens crash to the ground and people treading on my cables. But, but the surface just keeps glowing and just keeps sitting there. And if I want to plug something back in, I do. I plug it all back in, a new projector quickly, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, finger fiddling, and it's all back up and running again. It's just been so easy. And my performances are now moving to once a month, so it's going to get a lot more action over the coming months, and I'm really looking forward to that. I've discovered that a decent powered USB hub is your best friend. The single port on the side can support a MIDI keyboard, an audio interface maybe through a hub, but that's, that's about it. Once you start plugging a dongle in, it starts to, oh, I don't know, and starts falling apart. So you need something powered in order to be able to plug in all your peripherals. Is the dock a good option? No, not really. I mean, it provides an Ethernet port and it does provide a USB hub, uh, USB 2 as well as USB 3, which is nice, uh, but it holds your surface at the wrong angle. It holds it really up like this, which is great if you're sitting at a desk, but for any other situation, and of which there are plenty because it's a surface, it's a tablet, you're going to be using in all sorts of different situations. And certainly live, you're not going to be sitting at it like that. You're going to be wanting it down so you can tap on it and touch it and the dock can't do that you know I wish that someone had had uh, the wit maybe to supply kind of an extension cable that comes out so it plugs in the side in your power port and then goes into the dock that way so you can still have the surface out of the dock but connected to all the wonderful peripheral things uh, but you can use it more adaptably in a more versatile way that would have been awesome but no I haven't seen anything like that but otherwise, I've plugged in Machine, uh, Spark, and Launchpad Pro, my audio interfaces, uh, the Fast Track, Steinberg UR28M, and it's all just worked flawlessly. The performance is great, the audio latency over ASIO is easily as good as it is on the desktop, and even the on screen keyboards you can play with far less drag and latency than there is on my large desktop screen. So, you know, it plays really nice with others. I don't like the separate drivers for the onboard audio. I know I don't really care about the onboard audio, uh, this little this little fella here, but you know, you've got this separate speaker and headphone driver, which means that every time you, um, you want to switch between two or plug your headphones in, you've got to fanny around in the software and change things about and try to get that to work. And that's just a major faff. I mean, I'm sure somebody at Microsoft thought, oh, it would be genius, right? We'll have a separate driver for the headphones and a separate driver for the speakers and everyone's going to love it. And I don't know, that person should be taken out and shot, I think. So no, that's not fun. And also the volume is very low. I mean, when I got the Surface 3, the little one, it's like five times louder than this fella. You know, you sit this on your kitchen table trying to watch a bit of Breaking Bad or something and you could barely hear it over the background noise of life going on. Um, so that's a shame. I confess to not liking the keyboard very much. I mean, you know, it's all right, it's a bit spongy and that kind of thing, but, you know, when I first sit down with it and start typing, it's, it's just a disaster. There's errors on every line, and it takes a while to sort of acclimatise to it. And I guess, I guess that's true. Is that true of other keyboards? I don't know that it is. But anyway, but, you know, it does the job, it, it fulfils its purpose, but I don't like it greatly, I have to say. But you know, in, in putting together this article, I was writing on it for about an hour. And after that time, yeah, you kind of zoned into it and it was all right. But it does take some getting used to. So it ain't my favorite thing. It can get very hot at the back. 
it can get noisy when the fans come on. So that's not ideal. So when the new one comes along to have it fan free, would that be good? It would for some ways and for others it perhaps wouldn't. But that's a thought for another day. I wish you could fix the CPU speed to some sort of moderate level. You know, a level so it's not going to overheat, but also a level where it stays stable the entire time. Because there's nothing worse than when it starts to throttle and you've got to unload a lot of stuff in your project just to get it to come back to life again. It just, if you could just fix it at some kind of level, like at two gigahertz, and just have it run there all the time, then you would know the limits of your system that much better and could work within that. But none of that is specific to the Surface. I mean, any laptop hybrid tablet that runs the same Intel technology suffers from the same inherent problems. And I have found that working within those limits is not that difficult. And the performance you get out of it is excellent anyway. And finally, why can't there be somewhere, so just somewhere to put the pen? So in summary then, I love my Surface Pro 3. It's been an awesome device. It's the best thing I've ever bought. I thought the iPad was one of the best things I'd ever bought. We used it constantly, but it very quickly turned into a consumer device because I couldn't really do very much with it as far as music was concerned. You know, seriously. Uh, whereas with this, completely different experience. It has absolutely become my performance platform and I trust it implicitly. I don't need to have a backup one. A, you know, a wise man would say you need to have a backup one, which is true. But I haven't had a single glitch or error out of this when performing live. And it's, it's served me well this past year. You know, desktop touch is starting to catch on with, you know, with Studio One, with FL Studio 12, uh, with Sibelius and StaffPad. All these things are starting to discover that the touch interface can be immensely creative and immensely powerful in a desktop stroke laptop type situation rather than on a separate tablet like the iPad. Using the pen and touch gives you a different way to work which is really interesting in the creative process. Windows 10 doesn't seem to have affected it one way or the other. It hasn't increased or decreased performance. There are little issues that seem to keep cropping up from time to time like for instance in Ableton Live now you can no longer do a touch right click. You tap and hold and usually a right click menu appears but not anymore and not with a pen either and Ableton haven't really given me any information on why that would be other than to say oh, I don't know it's not really compatible with touch is it so uh, I don't know what's going on there and there may be other things that arise when I did my back in a few months ago the Surface Pro 3 became my all-day work machine for about a month and you know the touch keyboard aside it was it was awesome it worked it was very versatile uh, powerful enough to do everything I needed to do. I didn't feel uh, restricted or hemmed in other than the fact of not being able to move very much. So as an all day working platform, uh, it was exemplary as well. It was perfect. It was great. No problems. I don't necessarily prefer to make music on the Surface Pro 3 as opposed to my desktop because my desktop is that bit more powerful and it has more toys plugged into it and more software and plugins and bits and pieces installed. However, when I do move a project from the desktop to the Surface, it's a really pleasurable experience to sit down and start working with it with a pen and with touch and in a slightly different environment. So could it replace my desktop? No, probably not, but then I don't want it to or need it to because it exists in a slightly different creative space. So I'll keep both if that's all right. Apparently, the Surface Pro 4 is going to be announced, released, or talked about or something in October, which is just around the corner. And what am I hoping for? Well, for me, I hope they don't make it any bigger or any heavier. Uh, this is, you know, an ideal form factor. Uh, when the Surface 3 came out and it was that little bit smaller, that little bit lighter, that was no bad thing because this is on the slightly heavy side. So if they took some of the weight out, that would be great. I'd like to see a Thunderbolt port as I think that would open it up to a whole bunch of other peripherals, other audio interfaces and other potential stuff to plug in because the single USB port is really, you know, it does let it down a little bit, I think. I'd like to see a more stable CPU, but I don't know how likely that is. There seems to be some discussion as to whether they're going to go for Core M or Core I processors. Core M will be less powered, uh, but the idea being that it perhaps wouldn't need to have a fan which is good, but then that would also potentially drop down the performance 
so it may not be able to do as much. But you've got to expect that with a new version of something like the Surface, it's going to be able to do more. It's going to be more powerful, not less. But if it's going to be more powerful, then it's going to need a fan and there's going to be cooling issues and throttling issues again. So I don't know. I, I guess perhaps the perfect tablet is, is out of reach at the moment, but we'll see. I mean, either way, and in any case, when we're doing music production on computers, we're always doing something that the system was not designed for. Anything which is portable is not designed to have its CPU on all the time, to run with its hair on fire all the time, like we do as musicians and producers. It's designed to conserve battery and power and to give you the longest possible portable life. So we have to work around these things and work with these things and within the constraints because we also want a platform that we can take around, that we can make music on the go and we can perform with. So, you know, part of being a professional is working within the limitations of your gear and I'm very, very happy to do that. And I think that the surface range of what Microsoft are doing here is, is really important and can be an awesome platform for musicians in live performance. So will I be getting one? Well, to be honest, I can't really afford it. <laughs> I mean, this hasn't really paid for itself yet, I don't think. Um, but of course, I'd, I'd love one. I'd love to, uh, to see how that goes and to continue uh, this journey, if you like. I mean, I mean, you know, what do you think? I mean, maybe if you could let me know whether this has been useful to you, whether my harping on about the Surface Pro 3 has been good and you'd like me to continue with the Surface Pro 3 and or the Surface Pro 4, then, then tell me about it. I mean, maybe I can start a Kickstarter campaign. You can all throw me a dollar and then I can afford one. That might be nice. I don't know. But anyway, it would be really helpful to me if you could let me know whether this stuff has been helpful and whether you believe it's worth continuing. In the meantime, look out for more videos. I'm not always talking about the surface. I'm also talking about other things as part of multimedia technology. I've got videos and stuff and interesting things on Sylvanius and staff pad going head to head. Which is better? Do we care which is better? Or do we just want fantastic notation software working on the Surface Pro 3? I think that's what we want. So look out for that coming very soon. Look out for our monthly music technology, computer technology roundup video and come and see us again. Subscribe, follow us, Facebook us, talk to us, that kind of thing. And I'll see you next time. And in the meantime, go make some tunes.